So morning is Bini today on the 26th of September. The first thing that hit the market is about the huge drop in pound. All right, so you might be trading into the currency market or you might not. You might be only doing the stock market. But um, this video, I hope to raise your interest in why we, why the currency matters and why it matters even much more than the uh, stock market and why with the currency market, we can get sort of a preempt to what might be happening into the stock market. So let's check out the pound fresh crash uh, this morning. Uh, as you can see from my chart, this is uh, Pao Sing, a uh, one hour chart. Just alone in just one hour from this high to here, all right, Pao Sing to move down by 600 pips, all right. So um, I don't think that's fat finger here. I think this is just a normal sell or because of the speed of drop, I call this a fresh crash. But if you have a look into Pao Sing, it has been along this um, very uh, steep drop already. And from the high of about 1.85, 1.87, it has been continuously dropping. And that speed of, you know, of it coming down, it's accelerating. All right, if you look at some of the headlines right now, um, the saying is, you know, right now it's still at a high. So from 1.8 to 1.5, you know, pound saying is still at a high. So that's really surprising. But one thing I'd like to bring to awareness, why is it that the currency market matters a lot more and much more than you think, all right, when we are looking into the stock market, especially to predict into a potential financial crisis. So this is a historical uh, chart by uh, Bloomberg, etc., on the federal fund rates, all right, and annotated with crisis. If you do remember, the Asia financial crisis started around 1997 and what happened uh, during this period of time. So let's go back and recall what happened in 1997 or pre-1997, right? Let's say in 1996. Now at that point of time, the stock market was booming. All right, I still remember I started at that point of time and it was very easy to make money. I just have to buy and hold and as long as there's enough money to just hold it for a period of time, uh, there's no such things as losing. You sure make money, all right? But um, during the 19 1997 financial crisis, you know, things sort of changed. All right? The only thing I care about was in the news, they reported to say that, hey, look, the rupiah, uh, Indonesian rupiah has skyrocketed against the US dollar. That means uh, used to be at uh, 8,000 rupiah to 1 USD. But right now, you know, uh, even a 16,000 or 70,000 will cause a drop in the stock market. I wonder why was that so? All right, the reason was because... For those people and companies who borrowed that in pre-1997, let's say in 1996, all right, you realize that the rate was pretty much low. So between uh, 1990, where US rate was about 10%, it has not dropping. And during that pre-1997 financial crisis, all right, and it has dropped, say, for example, for the Fed rate to be about 3%. So a lot of companies started to borrow in USD because it was cheap. And at that point of time, USD was also dropping against their own currency. All right. So for example, if you are looking at Indonesia Rupiah, uh, maybe that um, one USD can get 8,000 Rupiah. So in other words, right, 8,000 Rupiah can borrow one USD. All right. But when Fed started to hike its rate, that means it started to move up its interest rate. Now, that's where the US dollar also goes up. Now, not only the interest rate moved up above 3% of whatever they borrow at that point of time, which was, which was considered low, all right, their currency also moved up because USD moved up, right? So with every one USD, all right, you might need to fork out 12,000 rupiah or 16,000 rupiah or 18,000 rupiah to repay that. If you are earning in local terms, let's say for example, if your business is earning, let's say, in rupiah, therefore you have to take more rupiah to repay the same amount of dollar that you have borrowed. Now this caused a huge stress all right, in the other financial economies, right? And also with George Soros started to attack the Thai baht, all right, but he was able to be successful in that attack because fundamentally there was a problem already. He saw that problem, he just used that problem all right, to trigger a massive drop. Okay, Now, if you look at each of the financial crises, as being said here, it 
worst because all right of a rising U.S. rate here, here Latin America debt crisis, all right, and then we have this Japan bubble burst, all right. We have the Asia financial crisis around here, all right, and then we have the U.S. housing collapse, all triggered by a rising USD and a rising interest rate. Now take a look right now, right in two zero one one. U.S. had their own problems, all right, and they started QE, all right. The U.S. interest rate was very low. A lot of companies issued U.S. dollar debt, and at the same time, a lot of people borrow in U.S. dollar. Now, if you take a look at now, when the Fed fund rate is at three percent, so that's around this place here, all right. Then what will happen to those people who borrow in U.S.D. and those people who need to repay U.S.D. right now? Put this in perspective. All right, so for example, we had two zero, two zero. All right, so that was when the interest rate was still low, and then we have companies that issue debt at one percent. That means that they borrow the money at one percent. All right, and then let's say you are a Singapore company, and the rate was one point three five. Okay, now what is one point three five? That means the rate of USD. Right versus the SGD, that means one USD. You need one point three five SGD to pay that one USD dollar loan. All right. Now coming back in two zero two zero, right, which is right now. Imagine if the rate has gone up by three percent. So you're gonna you need to pay more interest rate right now. Okay, assuming that is flexible rate. All right, and the problem is the rate right now of US. Versus the Sing dollar rate, it's assuming at one point four five. Okay, so this means that in local terms, you have to have one point four five of Sing dollar to pay that same amount of dollar debt. Now the problem is, what if this whole equation is moving at a very fast rate? We are not talking about slow where it takes years. We are talking about the changes happening in just like. Two months, three months, with a huge fluctuation in terms of interest rate and a huge fluctuation in terms of the currency. So, if you take a look at back into the drawing here, all right, that today pound GBP versus USD, all right, it's dropped by four hundred pips. Okay, so imagine last week somebody was able to repay. All right, pound versus USD at a four hundred pips higher price, but you have to have to come up with extra money right now. So that is going to be a stress to the economy, All right? So the real problem is okay again, not about uh USD going uh up. It's about how fast that USD is going up against the other currencies, or rather, the other way is that how fast the other currencies are. Falling against the USD. You look at the amount of debts that's borrowed in USD. All right. Um, imagine that's a twenty trillion dollar debt. Imagine how much short squeeze is going to come, and how much stress that's going to bring to the financial world, especially even in the stock market or the crypto market, or any companies. Right. If the other currencies are falling so much faster versus the USD. All right, so that is something that we need to consider, and we need to look inwards if we're gonna have another one more financial crisis to come.